Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm very pleased today to have Peter Balash from the Polyglot Gathering as our guest. Peter, first of all, could you tell us just what is the Polyglot Gathering? What's the elevator pitch in a sentence or two? So hello to everybody. Uh, polyglot Gathering is, uh, let's say, the event, the, the gathering of polyglots, but also a language lovers or just uh, people interested in languages or language learning. And normally uh, it is the live version. Uh, uh, the first three years was in Berlin, then three years we organized in Bratislava in Slovakia. And then this year was the plan to move the event to Poland. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the situation with coronavirus changed uh, the plan, uh, the plans. And so now we, we hope to organize the first virtual polyglot gathering online. Uh, and so this is one of the biggest events for polyglots ever, actually, in, in the world. Uh, the last year uh, we had already more than 650 people uh, from uh, more than 60 countries. Uh, so if you are interested in languages, you should be there for sure. Or online this year or uh, hopefully in next, uh, next year or, or the other years uh, in the future uh, life. And if anybody's watching for the first time and is a bit app apprehensive because of the word polyglot, I was checking up on the website before the call, Peter, and it's, there's a question and answer section there. And it said, uh, how many languages do you need to speak to come to the polyglot gathering? And the answer was, one, your mother tongue. So actually, while there were some incredibly accomplished language learners, there were also people just starting their first language or even just thinking about doing so. Yes, of course. Uh, the the event is, let's say, for anybody who is somehow interested in language learning. It doesn't have to be polyglot, or maybe it's the first steps to 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 become a polyglot. Uh, of course, is uh, very good to to know English, as it's for now it's like the the first language or the the working language of uh, most of the talks as well, and so on. But uh, it's not uh, not uh, necessary actually. So we, you you will have there more than 600 participants. So you can for sure find some people they would like to speak with you any language you, you know. Uh, so it's uh, like not obligatory to to speak English, but uh, of course it's like the advantage. Uh, and uh, the talks we also have uh, online or offline on the uh, versions before. Uh, we already uh, try to, to put more and more talks in other languages. So the people can join talks in, in Russian, in Spanish, in German, French and so on. For example, last year we had very nice uh, yoga lessons or Tai Chi lessons in Hungarian or, or such activities. So it's uh, really more connected in, and it's not only about the languages, but also about the other cultures and, and to uh, the community. Yes, I saw on the program this year for the virtual event, there's going to be talk uh, in Portuguese, for example, about why, why Portuguese seems to sound like Russian, which I thought would be an interesting one. Now, having gone to so much trouble, Peter, to find a new venue, then you had to take the agonizing decision uh, to postpone the physical event for a year and to move to an online event. Now, it must have been very difficult to know when to make that call. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Uh, so the problem was that Actually, we had no uh, ideas how this pandemic situation will be after one week, after one month, uh, or, or even now we are not sure uh, about the possibilities. Uh, we had several options, and, and we like uh, we observed the, the situation every day and, and try to uh, think what would be the good or, or best solution. Uh, and so then was the idea uh, what to do and how uh, to, to make it, how to not to lose the, the community and, uh, and how to make it somehow uh, at least uh, um, half so good, let's say, as the uh, live version of the gathering. Now, the dates have changed just slightly. It was going to be the 26th to the 30th of May, but now it's the 29th to the 31st. For those who've already got tickets for the physical event in 2020, what's the situation? 
Uh, yes, actually, all these people already received uh, several emails from, from us. Actually, now we have already this situation that uh, uh, we um, like we have more than 200 people. They decided, let's say, to stay with us and just postpone this money for the next year's event and to, to visit this online version uh, this year. And we also have more than... 200 people, like new people, they already decided to buy tickets for this year's uh, online version. So we're looking at about 400 at the moment. And uh, yes. Today, um, like tickets in, are still I, on we, sale. So if someone's just watching this for the first time and hasn't had a ticket up to now, you can go to polyglotgathering.com com. Yes, and buy, buy the ticket. Uh, what's the pricing for tickets for the online only? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, 40 euros. And for those who have a ticket or are thinking of getting a ticket, then there's a packed program. Now, normally it's uh, several tracks running over four days. I presume there'll be one track with one speaker on, you know, people consecutively. But you've got on the you've got on the website about you've got 38 speakers now. Uh, so, first of all, uh, our plan is to have uh, separate rooms, like uh, the slots. Ah. So, the plan is to have uh, at least three slots. The first will be like uh, uh, English talks or in English. Uh, the second will be like non-English talks, so uh, talks in other languages. And the third slot will be something like language tandems or language exchanges. So, that will be like rooms. Uh, uh, for a certain language or set languages and the people just can go in and like talk with other participants to practice languages and so on. So this is like the main part of the Saturday and Sunday programs. Um, on Friday, we would like to start in the afternoon uh, based on the European uh, summertime. Uh, and uh, there should be mainly the social activities, the language games, language quizzes, uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, even some short language courses uh, for several languages, uh, and even free chat room for the people they would like just to talk with other participants. Okay, so you really are making an effort to replicate the social side as well. I hadn't realised that, so uh, that that sounds really good. Now, in terms of actually what's on the programme, I've I was having a look before this call, and I can see you've got um, sort of various seems to be various chunks. You don't have an overarching theme normally, but we've got people talking about methods, uh, different languages, one or two other themes. So I saw Richard Simcott, a uh, regular speaker is going to talk about when can I say I've learned a language. Richard, of course, is the organiser of the Polyglot Conference. And you've also got Tetsu Young from, from Langfest speaking this year about raising multilingual kids. I'm not sure that Tetsu's uh, participated before, taken part as a speaker. Uh, yes, so this, uh, let's say, virtual event is maybe some kind of, uh, or it has for sure also some pluses. Uh, because some people could not participate because of time, money, the distance and so on. So maybe this is also like uh, somehow we try also to, to find a positive way of, of this pandemic situation. Uh, and uh, this could in, we could enable to, to take part in, in this uh, virtual event uh, for people they would maybe never uh, have the possibility to, to visit uh, on uh, gathering uh, live in, in Europe. Uh, or this could be also maybe the first step for some of the participants into the polyglot community. So uh, maybe they are too shy to come uh, uh, live on, uh, to the event. So maybe this could be like some, some kind of encouragement for, for them. Tetsu's topic is uh, raising multilingual kids. And there's a second talk uh, from uh, Lisa Kalugina from Siberia. So there's going to someone who's going to find it rather easier to deliver online, perhaps. Uh, I'm sure she would have come anyway, uh, but she's got to talk about children teaching each other, how children teach children online, which I thought was a was certainly an interesting one for me. Uh, looking at some of the other methods talks, I saw uh, Marta Melnik is one of your team of 13, 14, 15 organisers, also a regular. She's talking about public speaking for language learning, uh, which uh, is a real way, I think, to put your speaking skills 
on the spot. Uh, and uh, yeah, that sounded to me like like something I definitely wanted to wanted to listen to. And um, Maria Spantidi as well, who I know because she's like me, a, a Basque speaker. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, how to start uh, learning a language, uh, cost and loss. Yeah, I think hers is one of the talks in, in German. One thing that I suppose it won't be possible to replicate is the international culinary evening when people bring <laughs> typical foods or sweets, biscuits, drinks from their own country and share them with everybody else. <laughs> yes, that's that's true, and uh, that's the reason why we we think about some free chat room where something like that could be possible, but like with with the own beer or <laughs> drink or, or snacks and whatever. So, so get your own stocks in early, folks, for that. Uh, staying with method, one area which I think is strongly represented this year on the program is sort of pronunciation and sound. I mentioned already Piotr Sios's talk in Portuguese about Portuguese phonology. But there were a couple of general talks on pronunciation. One is Rubin Adery, who spoke last year, who was great uh, talking about uh, do I detect an accent is the, is the subject of his talk. So it wasn't like planned to, to make some special program about uh, phonology or, or pronunciation. But uh, maybe in, in this uh, online uh, world, it's uh, actually a, a good topic. Yeah, there's a sort of logic, isn't there? Um, Rick Dearman is on the program too, a regular speaker. One of the best speakers, I think, every year talks about completely unrelated, different topics with lots of practical advice. Last year, he was talking about language tandems. This year, he's talking about the listening, reading method. There's a talk from Javier think on uh, lessons from neuroscience for language learners. There were a couple of sort of neurosciencey talks last year. I love all this, um, you know, cognitive uh, uh, science stuff. So uh, that's another one I'm looking forward to. And then you've got uh, various talks on individual languages. So you mentioned language learning uh, sort of language classes, maybe, but also people presenting different languages that they're enthusiastic about. So Siri Lane is talking about Basque, a language close to my heart. Uh, but then there's a talk on Lithuanian. There's one on Belarusian. There's one on Circassian or uh, the Adigi language in the north of the Caucasus, an endangered language. There's one on Hakka Chinese uh, for my heritage speaker, I think. Um, and uh, then Anja Spilka, who's the co-organizer of the Polyglot Conference this year in Mexico, we hope in, in the autumn, uh, but is a regular at the gathering. She's talking about all the different languages in Mexico as well. Yes, uh, so we are, we are happy to have such, uh, let's say, programs or talks because it's maybe not so broad topics which uh, you cannot find to and on uh, let's say regular uh, conferences on uh, but but anyway uh, it's very interesting to to hear about such languages or, or topics uh, and uh, this is also one of the let's say pluses of uh, gathering uh, it uh, gives floor to almost anybody who, who you can uh, you can uh, listen or, or, or be part of the talks of the one of the most famous polyglots, but also to hear about uh, interesting topics from let's say beginners in in this uh, area or or even also from the professors from the linguists and so on. Uh, so this is also quite interesting, uh, uh, maybe um, unique uh, um, uh, think about uh, the gathering that we, we give the floor to, to all possible topics and people. Uh, so some of them maybe can discover their talents or, or their um, passion, uh, to, to give the talks or to speak about languages and so on. Uh, and there's one on, do you speak business? Alexander Medvedovic, yeah, who, uh, has given a couple of very amusing talks in the last couple of years. One was the language of love two years ago. Last year he was talking about swear words in different languages. That was what I didn't record much of for the vlog. Um, but uh, he's going to be talking about something rather more serious this year, about how you can use languages to help you in your career. So um, if you're thinking of using 
you know, starting a career in languages or you were trying to redirect, uh, that might be that might be one for you. So I suppose we better wind it up now, Peter. I better let you get back to your scheduling. Uh, but just to remind people then of the dates and the websites. Yes. So uh, the official dates of the Polyglot Gathering uh, this year, the Polyglot Gathering online, are 29th uh, uh, till 31st of May. But in fact, we have a small surprise or small additional program for the 1st of June, the Monday. It's like uh, Kids Day, or I don't know actually how it is uh, called in, in, uh, in English, but it's like International uh, Children's Day or Children's Day. Uh, so uh, for this Monday, we uh, plan some special talks and programs about like uh, raising uh, children multilingually or uh, the programs or the talks uh, of not children, but of teenagers, for example. Uh, they will uh, present how they became uh, polyglots or about the topics they proposed. So it will be like special programs for, for this day. And uh, tickets and all information uh, could be found on polyglotgathering.com. And we already have more than 400 uh, uh, participants uh, in actually in five days. We, we launched the possibility to, to buy the tickets. So uh, it's a really good start uh, because we weren't uh, um, sure how the community would uh, react uh, for this, uh, to, or to this online version. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time out from your busy schedule, Peter, to tell us uh, what we've got to look forward to. Folks, if you've already signed up, I'll expe I expect there'll be organizational emails coming to us all telling us how to log in and so on. I know as a speaker myself, there's going to be a trial to test the technology coming up. That's certainly a dry one, which I'm going to need. And I'm really looking forward to the event. So big thanks to you for taking the time out today. And folks, you can find out more on the website. As always, thanks a lot for watching. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe for the vibe, throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell and share the affair. See you all soon. Peter, once again, thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.